Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Matt Stein, it's Daryl the Guru Johnson with you. And joining us, 49er insider here at Odyssey. Also works for the Bay Area News Group, Cam Inman. What's up, Cam? How are you, man? I am great. I am uh, I'm tremendously excited. I just it's it's uh it's not like it's opening day but it it's the home opening day and it's uh they're they're 2 and 0 oh and it, it should be a good ball game tonight. Uh let's start with some basics. Uh what do you think uh Brandon Ayuk is going to do tonight? Uh I, oh my gosh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if he plays. I I think he does play Matt just because he played through the injury in Los Angeles and I think Brandon uh, he's obviously so good with this offense right now. Um, do you have to protect him? Yes. Um, do you absolutely need him? No. So you're asking me, what do I think? I think he plays, but I could be dead wrong. Cam, I got to be careful here. What if I told you I'm more eager to watch this Niner defense collectively than the Niner offense? Because I'm assuming they're going to put up points on this giant defense. But last week, I know Stafford got rid of the ball, but we didn't see a dominant, um, I don't believe, showing from the, the, the front from the Niners. What do you say to that? I agree because we saw a dominant defense in Pittsburgh, and the Steelers didn't get a first down until what, like a minute before halftime. And then in, against the Rams, it's just like they gave up so many yards, like chip, Stafford could chip away down the field, and you're like, this is not a number one defense. This, they got to get the ball. And then they did in the second half. So, okay, so that's how they should be playing. Um, the, the fact that the Giants don't have Saquon Barkley, they don't have their starters on, at left tackle or left guard, uh, the Niners' defense better make a statement for everybody on primetime TV tonight that they are going to be the number one defense this year and going to be the perfect complement to what could be the NFL's number one offense. Cam Inman joining us on 95-7 The Game. He covers the San Francisco 49ers for Bay Area News Group. And uh, tonight's game against the Giants, their quarterback has, you know, I don't know how you would describe him, but he's he's got some wheels, if you know what I mean. And, and it wasn't that long ago that there was a perception that, you know, mobile quarterbacks might give the 49ers some issues here and there. Where, where are we kind of with that? Uh, mindset and the the mindset of stopping a guy who's got some uh, running ability. No, that's a correct perception. I mean, they, they have had difficulty with mobile running, mobile quarterbacks, uh, just as they will tonight, because the whole mentality of the 49ers defensive front is to get in there as fast as you can. And if <laughs> if Daniel Jones sees like a lane on the outside, then he's going to try to exploit it. Now, if he's smart, he's going to see Nick Bosa on one side and try to go the other side, right? Um, but if, and, and you know, the Niners in the zone reads, it's all about the, uh, the containment on the edge and whether that's Cleveland Farrell on base downs or Drake Jackson, I, I can see Daniel Jones trying to escape on like a third and long and Drake Jackson just peeling off his block and using those long arms and that flexible body to, to pull him down. So, you know, the, the Niners are well aware of it, um, that the mobile quarterbacks have given them issues, but that's also because of the, the nature of their defense is just to be so aggressive and to try to get into the pocket where uh, Daniel Jones' best option may be to get the heck out of it. Cam, you know, when I bring up McCaffrey, I mean, he's MVP candidate. He's off to a great start. And Kyle, after the Ram game, said he forgot about Elijah Mitchell. But the fact that it's, you know, such a short turnaround, do you expect to see – uh, uh, not a heavy dose of Mitchell, but almost relieving McCaffrey of some hits. I, perhaps. I mean, I, McCaffrey explained it really well out of locker the other day to us. Of The Niners, when they had the ball against the Rams, they didn't have it long. They'd only have it for like maybe a couple minutes and they would score, right? And then in contrast, the Rams would go on these four or five minute marches down the field. So that gave him a lot of time to catch his breath and get, you know, get back. And he's totally fresh going into this season. Um, so they didn't need Elijah Mitchell. Obviously, you don't want McCaffrey playing every snap for 17 games. Um, but in a big game like this with a national audience, uh, I think he's going to want to prove to everybody that he can run the ball better than any running back in the NFL. Now, I think the interesting aspect is he only had, I think, six catches for 36 yards through two games. And that, that is not putting him on the 1,000-1,000 pace that we were kind of, I don't know, maybe wondering if he could do that. But that's because the Niners don't need him to be a thousand yard receiver. Not when you got Ayuk and Debo and Kittle, Jawan Jennings. Um, 
So, but at the same time, he is your offensive catalyst. Um, he could be the league MVP at the rate he's going. And do you need to pull him out for health reasons? Yeah, just get the big lead and then let it coast to get Mitchell his carries and then enjoy a nice weekend. Cam Inman joining us on 95.7 The Game. Yeah, I guess what I want to ask is, is in a perfect scenario, uh, let's say the 49ers are up three scores uh, after three quarters and McCaffrey's carried the ball 20, 22 times. Is the is the best case scenario like Mitchell finishes up the game? Well, you know what's interesting? It's that was kind of Jordan Mason's role last year as a rookie. He right. was kind of their closer. And I think there was like a little ball security issue towards the end of the season at one point, but um if you have a three touchdown lead, you gotta get those two guys in there, Mitchell or Mason. Um meanwhile, Ty Davis Price, who everybody raved about all off season, he's been inactive the first two games. And that's not because of his running ability. It's if you're a backup in the NFL, you got to play special teams. And right now, Jordan Mason, he's got a year under his belt doing that, and that's why he's been active ahead of TDP. Cam, we were having some fun earlier in regard to Brock Purdy, and do you really need to see more? And we get half people saying, yeah, they do, some they don't. But what did you make of his two games thus far, and also specifically the three passes he didn't connect on uh, last Sunday in L.A.? Yeah, it's not a matter of do you need to see more, it's do you want to see more. I want to see a lot of Brock. He is a just he's a joy to watch and he doesn't have to be just whipping the ball 50 yards down the field all the time, but okay, the fact that he overthrew three guys, right? Everybody makes a big deal of the overthrows. You brought it up, three of them. Okay? If that's another quarterback, I don't know if Shanahan wants him doing that uh multiple times, but mm. Kyle is so confident in Brock Purdy and his offense. That he, he's like, dial up anything. Let's go, because I got a perfect quarterback that want, can do anything I want. And Brock did not lose any confidence whatsoever in it, but he also took accountability on it. Um, and I like the fact that you overthrew it rather than underthrew it and give the um, quarterback or safety a chance to intercept it, because two games in, no interceptions. He has never had a two-interception game yet, and that's why he's so efficient in this offense. Cam, uh, let me ask you about the way the 49ers kind of, uh, or what Kyle Shanahan managed the game against the Rams. Um, do, do you think the 57 yard field goal um, that he went for and then letting Purdy, you know, calling timeout on that Rams last drive of the first half um, to make sure he got the ball back, you think, you think that's something that Kyle probably wouldn't have done uh, in years past with different personnel? Well, I think the, the I think the, the, that timeout and getting the ball back and going for the touchdown on fourth yeah. down that showed just Kyle's aggressiveness that I'm not going to let McVay take a lead into the halftime on me. Hmm. Uh, remember, the Rams had this crazy record about McVay and halftime leads. The Niners kind of beat them. Uh, they overcame that, I think, in the 2021 uh, regular season finale. But uh, the 57 yarder was interesting because you know Robbie Gold never made one that long with the Niners and. I, if you saw the video of once that field goal was good, Shanahan, his face on that sideline was, it was just, he was so proud and stoked that, yeah, this is my guy. This is my kicker going forward. So it's also about instilling belief in Moody at this point of the season going forward. And, uh, you know, for a guy who three weeks ago, three, four weeks ago, we were wondering whether he was going to be able to kick because he had a bad right leg. He's perfect through two games. So um, there's a little bit of difference, but I think Kyle's just aggressive. Um, I don't think he's conservative. I mean, they are putting up over 30 points a game with Brock Purdy as their quarterback, and that's why it's fun to watch and not a need to watch. Cam, I'm curious. We saw defensive coordinator Wilkes uh, bring the blitz in the second half, and it definitely helped. Lenore got a big pick. They got one gifted to him, took advantage of it. But the secondary as a whole through two games, I know it's a short sample size, but I felt like the Rams, you know, they did a lot. Where are you at with this Niners secondary thus far? I'm I'm way more comfortable than I was two weeks ago going into the season because they've made plays, right? Traverius Ward made an interception on the second series in Pittsburgh, and then you get Lenore and Isaiah Oliver getting picks in the second half against Stafford, right? The nature of how they were playing in the first half, they were playing so far off, and they just were inviting Stafford to throw underneath that they weren't going to give up a big play. And they gave up points, and that wasn't great. And then they switched and showed that they could play more aggressive. Isaiah Oliver emerged not just with the right place, right time interception off a guy's hand, but he made two big tackles. 
which is what you're going to need to be uh, as the nickelback, especially tonight against Daniel Jones. If he's going to come around the edge towards you on his own read and you're covering the slot receiver, you've got to be able to peel off and get him. Um, so I'm a, a lot more comfortable with the, that secondary. Uh, Hufanga and Gibson, remember, those guys were nursing injuries like late in the preseason. You're kind of wondering, oh, they're going to have to go with the rookie Jair Brown. Both of those guys have been steady. Um, and so I, I'm a lot more comfortable with the, the secondary right now. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they're going to get tested that much tonight with the Giants. I think the, the biggest test with the Giants' offense is going to be Darren Waller is going to be coming at him. And he gave him a little bit of a fit when he was with the Raiders on New Year's Day. And Fred Warner had a P.I. in the end zone. So uh, pass-wise, I just watch out for Waller. Cam Inman, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. All right, guys. Thanks. Good talking to you. Yes, enjoy sir. Enjoy the game tonight. Yeah, going to enjoy it for sure. Cam Inman, Bay Area News Group, 49er insider for uh, Odyssey.